So hello and welcome to the first interview in our series, Making the Right Moves. Thank in this you. series, we're tackling the challenge of access to finance for women-owned companies. And so we'll be talking to a number of women who have successfully raised funds to either launch or scale their business. We'll be talking to them about their journey, how they did it, the lessons they learned along the way, and tips they have to share. This morning, I'm so pleased to welcome Alison Turner, the CEO of Turner Innovations Limited. Alison is a co-inventor of the first harvesting, soil harvesting machine rather, in the world. Amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, her company, Turner Innovations Limited, has also been the first firm to be fully grant funded by the Development Bank of Jamaica. Her company is based in Jamaica, by the way, if I haven't said that. And um, she's also, and this is really impressive, she's raised two rounds of equity financing from First Angels, which is the first and only active angel investment network in the Caribbean. I'm so happy to welcome you to this series, Alison. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. And to Perfect. be with you, with, some, with your experience. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. So let's jump right in, Alison. And let me ask you the first question, which is, tell us a bit about how you started the company. What's your vision going forward? Okay, so um, my husband and I over ooh, about 14 years ago, um, identified a gap in the market in the sorrel industry. So my husband runs a small farm store in our community where we live in Jamaica and we retail things like feeding, et cetera. So we communicate with the customers. Um, it's a predominantly farming area that we live in. So we communicate with our customers every day about issues that are going on in their, in their environment. So um, we identified that there was a gap in the market in the soil industry because half the cost of production in sorrel, which is known as hibiscus, um, in other countries um, is the cost to strip the sorrow, which is the removal of the flesh from the sorrow sea pod. Um, that accounted for half of the cost. So um, we realized that a lot of people would shy away from this because it's labor intensive and tedious. So my husband started coming up with ideas and we played around with ideas for a few years. We actually came up with our invention and solved the problem and then covered it with a blanket in the garden. And it sat there for a couple of years with nobody paying it attention, sat through a couple of hurricanes. Um, that was quite funny. And then one day I just looked at it and I had a conversation with somebody at a, an event and the conversation came, about, came up about what we had invented. And I came home the night and just sat there looking at it through the window thinking, I wonder if this is something that could be developed. And I made a few inquiries. I talked to a few government departments and started the ball rolling. And 14 years later, we now have a commercial machine that's ready to go to market. So wow. an incredible long journey. Um, and you know, this market is it's grown in this sorrow has actually grown in 30 plus subtropical countries around the world everybody's using a hand method. So nobody has a machine. So our machine is the first USA patent pending machine. Um, and we have inquiries from all of these countries ready to purchase this machine that we've built up over the 14 years. The actual market itself is a three point, US $3.5 million market. Um, and Sorrel is known for its antioxidants, um, cancer fighting properties. So it's a major market that's there waiting to be um, manipulated. This is, this is actually amazing. So, so tell me about 14 years from actual conception to actually rolling out. So what have been yeah. some of the challenges along the way? Um, well, there's, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges that most small businesses um, face um, is financing. Um, Oh, didn't tell you about my vision. Our vision is to actually revolutionize the soil industry. I mean, literally be the leaders. And especially from a Caribbean island, we want to be up there right. at the forefront for invention. Right. That's very important. I need to put right. that. Right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, but, there's such a, a demand for soil, particular Christmas time. But now, of course, 
they've well, gone, uh, you yeah. know, upscale into teas okay. and things. So, you know, it's a year round yeah. demand now. So I right, think sure. you've hit a good one. Definitely, because um, some people don't actually realize that sorrel is the base herb ingredient, herbal ingredient in tea. So that's where the market value comes in and that it's used in so many different um, applications. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. wouldn't even think of it's gone far beyond the Christmas traditional mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. drink so it's a, it's, a, it's a big market huge market let me ask but, you before we get into financing let me ask you about how many farmers do you work with how many producers I'm just curious about that well because we have been focused on developing our product mm -hmm. um, we liaise with everybody and everything to do with Sorin and built up a huge database. But we, we deal with um, Sorin farmers who are on large scale production. So our machine is more aimed at farmers who are doing more than two to three acres. Mm. The speed and the increase that we can provide in the production of Sorin. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really for the small farmers at this stage um, mm. who are just providing, say at Christmas for Iglers, Mm -hmm. who want to buy 20 pounds. We're more focused on people who are providing like a thousand pound, 500 up to up and onwards um, mm -hmm. to perhaps drink manufacturers or um, people who are in the industry that are using a lot more sorrow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people like Trade Winds, for example, who have drinks companies um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. need to be able to produce for the year round and store, we're dealing with those farmers that they, we can cut down their um, production time and increase their, their speed um, mm -hmm. of being able to produce fruit. Because when you're dealing with farming, you're dealing with um, product that can go rotten very quick. And once you cut a particular type of fruit, what you can do in a short space of time and get it to these production uh, mm -hmm. to these uh, juice makers, for example, then that's a big plus for the industry to be able to, to be able to commit and take on more contracts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We're dealing with all the farmers basically, as long as they are doing the amounts that we that they, that they need to produce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. This gives me a, a, good, a very good sense of of sort of the the framework of the market you're operating. In. But let's zero in quickly on the financing aspect. You mentioned very yes. briefly that that was a challenge. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. Well, with our particular journey, um, with me, it was about um, I, I'm what I would class myself as a serial entrepreneur. So I moved out to the West Indies to Jamaica about 23 years ago. Um, from the UK, and I was exposed to a lot of things that were always in place. Um, so when I moved here and I, and I saw the gaps in how life could be made so much easier, I wanted, I felt the world was my oyster and I could change so many things. But I had to kind of take a step back from that and um, I had to consider culture. Um, I had to consider, um, you know, how important it is to be compliant. And up to this day, I'm still learning. Um, I think um, the challenge is, I think with financing, it was always about um, being able to be recognized as a, a woman in business. And it's kind of a man's world. Business was a, a man's world. So that was a big challenge. Um, going to banks, they didn't understand the entrepreneurship journey because there's a lot of scope there for you know uh, creativity and I think proven um, ideas are easier to back mm -hmm. for regular banks so there was a, definitely a gap there that we needed a special kind of service to help people in entrepreneurship who are creative um, who don't necessarily have collateral backing um, you know and money in place to be able to develop what are ideas that can change the world mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. those are some of the challenges that I found I went through a long I wasted a few of those 30, 14 years waiting on banks who said yes they would help and I would give them what they want they would come and do viewings of my area my work area etc take months going through uh, waiting for board meetings to happen only to be failed um, years mm -hmm. came out of my mm -hmm. journey for that mm -hmm. I could have been mm -hmm. focused on if I had been in a in a better area of health, then um, I would have advanced much quicker. 
So let me ask, at what point did you approach the Development Bank of Jamaica? Um, out of desperation, I actually filed our first. So we actually have one pet, one patent, USA patent for our first model. Mm -hmm. um, but when we got to production of that particular machine, it didn't work out to be cost effective. So we actually put it to one side. It's still there. It's a pattern. It has its value. But um, it's not what we need for the market that we're attempting to hit now. So we went literally back to the drawing board and invented a new machine. Um, but while we were doing that, we realized that once we filed the pattern that we had no money to finish it. And we had a, a short short period of time, one year, to get it from provisional to non-provisional status, which would have cost us a, a large chunk of money to do. So about six months into it, I realized how are we going to pay for this? Because what was going to happen was our patent was going to be open to the world and if they come in on our idea, they would have had necessarily financing to take it through and we would have lost everything. So we thought, who do we go to? And it was an obvious choice once I realized there was an organization called Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ. So I was like, ah, oh, this is a no brainer. Let's go and see them. Um, we couldn't get directly to them. They're a major organization and they kind of, when I looked into what they did, it wasn't really focused around entrepreneurship. So my next point of contact was farming. It's a farming industry. Who do we go to, Minister of Agriculture? Um, at that time, it was Roger Clark, the Honorable Roger Clark, who's passed away now, God rest his soul. Um, and we bombarded his office and said, listen, this is going to be huge. This is going to change the world. You're the one that's going to help us get there. And he was like, OK. And we finally got him to come and see us. And he was so impressed with what we had done. And we said to him, look, help us. You know, we need people that are in the right areas that can direct us and get us through some of the red tape um, to get the support that we need. Because unfortunately, I found that in overseas countries, there were more structured ways to be able to get help. There wasn't any of that in the Caribbean at that time. We're talking 14 years ago. It was all brand new. Um, mm -hmm. And we pushed him and we said, who, 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 who has money? Does Development Bank of Jamaica have money? And if they do, give me a letter, let me go there and ask them to help us because I won't get through the doors. And eventually, just to, I think, get rid of me, he gave me the letter and I walked it to Development Bank of Jamaica and forced my way into, at the time, Milverton Reynolds' office, um, <laughs> who was the marketing director there. And I used the fact that he was from St. Elizabeth to connect with me. <laughs> you know, you good, good move. <laughs> any which way. i never forget it because, you know, I, I insisted that we had an, uh, an appointment and I didn't get it confirmed, but I went there because I told them that I was coming. And when I got there, I never forget Milverton popped his head around the corner and said, are you Alison Turner? And I said, yes. And he said, um, well, if you're, um, if you're this determined to get to me, I know you're going to be successful in business because you, you know, I don't know how you even got this interview, you know. Um, and I, you know, I think I actually threatened him at one point, but yeah, that's another story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, he was impressed with the determination. That was key mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. our relationship. And we built a relationship. And then once we got the chance to pitch to him, we gave him a three minute pitch. He saw the value proposition and he then went out of his way to create something that could help us. And that was the beginning of, um, of Ignite. And of, of Ignite. Of the Ignite program. Of Ignite, right. So we that's amazing. It was funny because at the end of the meeting, he said, OK, right, we're going to give find them some cheap financing, um, low, low interest rates. We're going to um, help them. And I remember walking towards the lift with the person that brought me in and he said, well, how are you going to pay your loan back? Because it was a loan that he was providing for me. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. I don't care. I just want to get the money. We'll figure <laughs> that out when we get there. Right. And right. He said, no, you can't. do. We have to have a plan. So. And we worked together. I worked together with that person who was an inter, you know, he was a, a clerical at the time. He's now moved way up in the company because of the success and, of course, his efforts. Right. Um, but we worked together and put a plan together and came up and, and we put it towards the DBJ board and it failed. And we came back and we readjusted it and it went back and it passed. And that's how we got the grant. And I remember when they gave us the money, um, they, I mean, every move I made, they were on my back. They called me every day, but I didn't realize they were monitoring how we progressed 
in that 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 agreement to be able to prepare to help other people and put um, a, a team together called Ignite, where they provided grants for other businesses. Um, and we were invited a year later after we had our success and did what we said we were going to do with the money and showed our results. They then created um, an agreement with World Bank to actually provide grant funds of up to four million Jamaican dollars for people with ideas in Jamaica, 30 grants per year um, to help support them. And we were invited to that. that mm -hmm. It was amazing yeah. to realize that what we had pushed and was determined and went to do actually created an avenue for other people. And Ignite successful. still exists. And it might still It's in its fourth so iteration now, I think. Incredible. Yes, yes. It's That's very, very good. Yeah, amazing. Excellent story. Thank so you. you're building ecosystem as well, right? In terms of expanding so. the scope of financing for businesses in Jamaica. That's awesome. Right. Yes. Thank so you. so how so this is 14 years ago. So you've been moving along. Have you been financing yourself doing these 14 years? And at what point did you go to the Angel uh, Investor Network? Well, we first Angels for, for financing. We started off in the early days doing crowdfunding, family and friends, mm -hmm. you know, who just supported us because they had no choice, you know, <laughs> and um, that was a good starting foundation. We started to get the idea out there. Then we started to look at online services for grant funding, um, but qualifying for those um, meant having some history, having some, you know, um, having things in place already that you've achieved. To, mm -hmm. be able to attract that but there was some form of grant funding dbj was one of those um one of those paths that we took that we got grant funding from to help us with our first patent um and then the next thing that we realized is that we had to be compliant and we had to have a good business plan so we started looking at groups that were out there that were helping people get their structure together so that they could get financing mm -hmm. and we came up against um, two people in our early stages, um, Branson Center of Entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and also First Angels. So we did our business plan with Branson Center of Entrepreneurs, amazing group of people, business experience people that then led us to First Angels Jamaica, who are now, you know, my family. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, they had also just started Mm -hmm. going into the world of investment so it was early stages for them early stages for us and we came together with them and they just provided a wealth of information and they had key partnerships in place and experience to be able to help us get financing that was mm -hmm. just key areas for them mm -hmm. um, so we pitched after having a great business plan we pitched to them and they felt we had something great and they invested in us um, I think we were the second or third company to be invested in by them at the time. And now they have about 30 company por mm -hmm. portfolios under that, um, mm -hmm. you know, years later. So we're still learning and they're still up and, they're, and their services has just grown from strength to strength because they have the key partnerships and they mm -hmm. do the work for you to be able to get that a lot, just like your service. I mean, we met you through... Uh, Development Bank of Jamaica and First Angels. So, and that was a blessing, you know. <laughs> so it's very, very important to socialize, to network, to um, look at what's available and, 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 and tap into that, share your stories, um, mm -hmm. because it leads to open doors and to services like um, Dev, Solution, Dev Solutions and um, RevUp, for example, who can. You've, they've done that. These companies have done their work already and take out half of the work for you. So when you go into them, they, they're there to provide you with a platform to help mm -hmm. you be successful and support you on that on that journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Part of what we do at Their Solutions here is to do this facilitation to put people together around access to finance primarily. But I wanted to go back to something. You got this first round of investment and what, what was the time frame between the first and second round? Well, according to our business plan, so we said we were gonna be up and running and making money within you know two years with our business plan, I had it all set out. 
And, you know, the thing, particular thing with our particular business, it's quite hard because it's invention. Mm -hmm. It's very unpredictable. Um, you can go two years and everything's going fine and then everything crash and you start right back at square one again. Um, and it was important and it was hard because we had to keep our investors updated, interested, you know, and give them a reason to keep investing. So the first set of funding that we got um, didn't, we didn't reach our goals at all. No mm -hmm. way. Um, so by the time we had to get our second round of funding, we had to say to them, I think one of the great things that happened was that with our particular investors, they became board members. The investors themselves became board members, which was, it allowed them to see the journey and show that they understood where we were at when we came time to need a new funding. Mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. was key. I think when you have an investor that's outside and you don't produce what you say you're going to produce, then all of a sudden, you know, they lose interest because they don't understand mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're fortunate enough to have good investors who have the same vision and who are interested and who are supportive, because they're, you can have nightmare stories too, where folks are on your board and you have a different perspective and you can't seem to resolve it and it creates problems for the company. So exactly. you've been fortunate. Very. Um, and I think um, not just fortunate, I, I, I do believe in fortune, but I do believe that you create your own destiny. And you have to put the right people in place if you want to be successful. You don't don't wait for it to happen. You've got to make it happen. Mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. to consider that these the investors have normally have their own businesses, and that is their key focus. And they're interested, especially angel investment. It's more done from a perspective of we think this is a great idea and we're going to help. And it's normally their own personal money that they'll put into angel investing as a way of support of other entrepreneurs that might have taken similar journeys to them to bridge some of the gaps that they had. And they're now mm -hmm. in the can do it so it's mm -hmm. a, a position of love but also from a position of this is probably my retirement money if it works you know right so, right right so right it's it, it's a case of priority and you've got to keep that dream alive for them and remember it's your dream you're the one that's going to do the work mm -hmm. they're putting financing but they're not expecting to do the work you have to do the work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so even absolutely when COVID, when COVID hit you know, the focus shifted because it was about survival for everybody. So I had to make a decision. Is this a good reason for me to pull out? Is this a good, you know, is this a, 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 an acceptable reason? It would have been, but no, my determination to push through COVID, I relied on, I turned from financing and went to grant funding to keep me afloat while we got through COVID. And, mm. and I still produced my, um, my goals on a smaller scale scale because it was a smaller scope but I still produced my goals and when COVID started to um, show a sign of recovery I went back to my investors and said look I didn't give up I'm still as determined as I was when I started this project I had every reason to, to quit it because COVID would have been a great excuse for me to mm -hmm. walk away a mm -hmm. reasonable excuse but I did mm -hmm. come board I need mm -hmm. you back board to help me push it through. And that's exactly what I did. I, I, I put um, a proposal forward that if I could earn X amount in and prove my concept, would you come back on full hundred? And mm -hmm. my investor said, okay, go for it. Mm -hmm. I did double what I said I would do. And I did it in half the time. And that brought them back in as to say, yes, she's going to go the full mile. And now we're here. Mm -hmm. We're ready to go to market. So it was important. Mm -hmm. In an answer to your original so, question, so where did you get? It was about the journey. The, uh -huh. It was really a time frame. It was being able to show my investors that it was worth putting in that second round. Um, mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. didn't have a time frame. It was about when they were ready to see that we could move forward with the next round of funding. Right, right. So, so where do you get the grant funding for that bridge between the first equity investment and the second? Development Bank of Jamaica. They have, <laughs> of course, um, a course on. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Um, and I just applied like regular, a regular business person out there. Um, I qualified on the merits of my, of partly my history, but because of where I was at in my journey, that was important. I met the criteria. I applied, and I got through um, to get the course. I had to do my work. I had to turn up. Um, I had to do my hours of online zoom meetings every week three times a week 
um, I had to fill in forms um, and qualify. And a part of the um, success of that was that you were offered some form of grant funding. So I had to shift my business plan, which is mm -hmm. something you always have to do. You have to move according to what you can do at the time. Mm -hmm. um, make it work for me. There was with with Development Bank of Jamaica, they had different areas of expertise, and I chose the ones that suited me that I needed at the time for the business. Mm -hmm. um, which program? That, which program was this? Um, Winston, don't put me on the spot. I've done so many programs. <laughs> because no, I was thinking immediately of the the Innovation Grant Fund, but yes. that's that's well, a part. Well, actually, that... I'm actually on a, a one now, which is a um, a patent. Um, innovation, a patent. Um, for, oh, I feel awful now. A a no, it's a grant to it's facilitate. Grant. Yes, it's part of it's the Biggie patent. program, the Boosting Innovation and Eco Innovation right. Ecosystems program that they're running. Right. right. Okay. Uh, okay. I've been on so many, so many different. Um, <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I can't remember the names. But no, but I think the interesting thing is that you've been able to pivot from equity to grants, back to equity in order to make things work in the company. And that's very important, that flexibility and yeah. that being that willingness to shift yeah. to suit the, the moment. Right. You have, I mean, in business, if you want to be successful, you can't, you know, my, the biggest thing that I think if I had to say, if I had one sentence for myself would be, I never, ever take no for an answer. It's never, it's never an option. There's always a way. It's mm -hmm. just fine that way. And if you get stuck at any point in business, you just diversify and do something else until you can get to where you're going. And that's what keeps me going. I'm so there's so many people that have told me on this journey that I'm not going to make it. That just that sake alone, just to be able to look at them one day and say, "Ha, <laughs> me going." Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, but so I think I we're jumping into it. lessons now. We're jumping into lessons and advice. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, so, okay. so let's let's go there. Okay. So you said that one 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 thing you've learned is never take no for an answer. But yeah. I, I think when I met you in the course, the introduction to equity investing course, I sensed that determination right. to so, just make it. You know, no matter what. No matter what. And yeah. so and so that's that's one point. But do you have any other gems to share? Um, yeah, I mean, from a structured uh, view, I guess, have a good business plan. Um, it has to be believable. Keep your revenues realistic. You know, don't go into high figures. Don't worry about that. That will come. When you're looking for a financing, it's got to be believable. I remember it's your dream, not somebody else's. You have to make it interesting. Um, you have to keep it sharp. Um, and there are so many teams and groups out there that are willing to help show you how to put that together. Even if you just go simple to Google and look up pitches, for example, for the bigger companies like Google, even you know Uber and the big, big companies that have made it, Airbnb, you can look at any of those and their, their structured business plans are there to give you a guide of what investors are looking for. So that would be one bit of advice. The second bit of advice I would say is get support from readily available organizations, Revup, Dev Solutions. They have a wealth of experience and they've been in the industry for a long time. Um, they've done the homework and they've created partnerships with the type of people that can give you the financing that you need. People like DBJ, people like World Bank. Um, and these are the people that are going to help you make your business grow in these early stages. Um, the third bit of advice I would say is, which is really important, which is kind of an oversight in my opinion and my experience, and that is look for investors and think about investors that have similar journeys to yours. So, for example, when I started pitching to investors for financing, I, I pitched to two groups. The first group were a group of companies that dealt with the hotel industry. They dealt with computers, um, technologies, et cetera. Um, and they had no clue what I was talking about. Absolutely no clue. So their solution to my financing was to um, franchise, let it go. 
And it was much deeper than that. And that it wasn't a bad idea because eventually it will get there, but there was a whole journey to take before there. So I had to appeal to people who were interested in farming, who understood the journey of um, growth and setting foundations. Um, so when you're pitching, this would be my third piece of advice. When you're going to people for financing, make sure they understand, don't go to the large banks, go to a credit union, a farmer's credit union in my case, because they will have a better vision of where you're trying to go and understand where you're trying to get there. So it's important you pick the right teams um, mm -hmm. able to get financing. Wrong. Right. So so it means you have to do your homework. We talked about yeah. this in class. I don't know if you were there yeah. at that session, but sort of really doing your homework and figuring out which investors, which financiers will suit your business model rather than just going to the world, but make it very intentional. Right. Yeah, so you have a basis for discussion. Yes. Uh, <laughs> anything else? Um, no, just just generally, you know, it's. It's not easy getting money in anything that you do, but um, it's very, very important to keep your, to visualize where you want to go and how you're going to get there and keep that vision in front of you because there's going to be so many days that you're going to want to give up. There's going to be so many days where you're going to say, do you know what? Nobody believes in my idea. Nobody gets it and walk away, but you have to keep your goal in front of you um, and, and just keep believing, just keep going. Keep your environment really sacred. You know, have people around you that will encourage you constantly um, so that when you do get there, because entrepreneurship is a very lonely journey. Even me at this stage, and even though I give advice to keep your environment sacred, when I go through a, a down, excuse me, <coughs> when I go through a down period, I find I don't even want to talk to anybody. <laughs> but reading a book, reaching out, sorry, <coughs> helps me get through. And that's important. Right. But I think, I think too, sort of networking <laughs> and being able to connect with folks who have women in particular, who have gone on the journey and who, um, who like you have, you know, learned from learning by doing basically and can pass on some gems and words of wisdom and advice to to entrepreneurs and women business owners sort of coming behind also makes a difference because you know women I'm just looking at something now I was reading an article that says women are not inclined to really want to ask for help they're sort of solo entrepreneurs you know so doing their own thing and men are much more inclined to seek out advice and help and, um, you know, from other men or other, you know, other business people, right. whereas women are ten, tend not to want to do that for whatever reason. Right. So I think that's also important to be able to open up and be more intentional about networking. And that's why these courses that are provided by different people are so important, because you do create relationships. Mm -hmm. and you bond with people um you know often uh, when you do a course you set up a whatsapp group mm -hmm. and you'll connect with people in the group and perhaps form different relationships and you'd be surprised i think a lot of entrepreneurs would be it seems obvious but you'd be surprised exactly how many people are going through the same issues that you are and um, a problem shared is a problem half absolutely absolutely um, and, and we do this now because, you know, we become friends in other social groups like Facebook and so on. You'll see somebody post um, mm -hmm. something and then you'll reach out to them and you'll ask them how their business is doing. And just that word of encouragement. And I think it's easier to relate to people that are in the same um, ground as you or have experienced um, something that you might be going through and just hearing how they coped and that the fact that they did cope gives you the encouragement you need to keep going. Absolutely. So, your environment is very, very important. I often say to young people, you know, some people might come from a background where their parents didn't necessarily have the connections to be able to go to college or, um, you know, achieve certain things, but they worked really hard at perhaps cleaning people's houses or mm -hmm. doing different types of, 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 of 
earn an income in other ways so that their children could. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for them to have the vision that their child might have. I mean, I might, their child might want to be a banker, but they want to come home and talk to their mother about it. And their mother will be like, well, better stick to something simple like cleaning like I did because yeah. she knows. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's what got that child where to where they were able to be able to dream big. But don't talk to her about that. Talk to her about love and about mm-hmm. home and about all the great things that she is. And hold that conversation for somebody who's already there. Mm-hmm. The social area where your the bankers are. And mm-hmm. talk to the bankers that you can talk like them, think mm-hmm. like them and get their ideas. Your environment is very important. And it's very important to keep that sacred. Um, mm-hmm. to succeed in life. Mm-hmm. You know, I lean on, I would lean on you. If I need any kind, if I get a day where I think, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to finance this. I would say, let me email Winsome quickly. And, see. <laughs> and I know I'm going to get, even if you can't provide me with the answers, you're going to give me the encouragement that I need to keep going. So it's important that your environment is sacred. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's the next step for Turner Innovations? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just come back from Texas, USA, with our new prototype, and we're about to launch. Wow. Um, So how is it different than the first? Oh, my gosh. It's just amazing. So my husband and I are just, um, it's it's our new design that now has been commercialized. So we've had it, um, where it used to be a lot of... um, strings and, and, and rubber bands and things that made the machine work, which worked. We've now gone to a machine that is um, commercially viable and it's, it's sturdy, it's strong, um, it's performing, it's doing everything we promise it is. We've got, um, we've got a, a wealth of, of people interested in purchasing the machine that we've built up over the 14 years. We've done some price testing, we've, done, we've been through the whole Wow. Of business. Um, and so when's the launch? Ready. Ah, so um, in the next month or so. Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be online or is it going to be just no, we're in person? Launch. We're doing a soft launch in Jamaica. It's going to be very low key. We're oh. just customers to test our, our, our first machine. We'll be, build, we'll be building machines for them. I don't know if you should be telling you all of this, um, but um, it will be out soon, very soon. We're, li- we're literally now just doing our marketing pulling it all together. Um, the launch will be possibly in the next four to six weeks. Mm-hmm. Nice. We're in- introducing it to our um, local farmers first and then getting some feedback from them. And then we'll be hitting the world stage and uh, pursuing all of those um, people that are interested in buying machines overseas. Well, let us know so we can- well, I will do. Blast the information out there. Nice if you could be here for the launch. That would be so much fun. When is it going to be? When? What? Which? Which time? Um, we're looking at early April, mid April. Mid April. Well, yeah. you never know. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. That would be that would be amazing. <laughs> yes, I'd love to be there. I remember we've got pictures of us from the very early stages when we had no idea what we're doing to development to to launch. Yeah. Now. So it'd be nice well, you know, it's a learning curve and it's a learning experience, yeah. and with each time you get better, right? Yes, um, being able to share that with people so that it makes their journey shorter is a really humble place to be and a really great place to be because it was tough, mm-hmm. you know. It was very discouraging when you when you rely on certain organizations to be able to help you get to the next stage and they weren't forthcoming. Mm-hmm. So you don't want people to have to go through that. So we've right. experience to make that experience better for them, then it's a great thing. Mm-hmm. Great thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you contemplate future um, equity plays or not? Definitely. I mean, you know, we, we want to grow. Mm-hmm. This is the beginning, but the great thing for us being taking it from um, concept to, um, to uh, a, a, a minimum viable product and moving forward from that point is that we now have some traction to be able to move forward. And of course, we want to grow very fast because we have a we're, we're going to be creating competition once our machine goes out there so we're going to need the mm-hmm. right financing the real financing to push us to, to make do it right, our goals right. In, in a time frame that's um critical to our product 
Mm -hmm. so now the real finances. Yes, that's true. So we're talking venture capital. Definitely, definitely. And I know we're going to get it as well. I'm oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Because you can, you know, any investor can see the progression from where you were 14 years ago to now and the trajectory. So I think I'm confident you get it. I am too. And I think it's really important never to forget where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, our key partners will always be um, our, our first point of contact mm -hmm. in, because they were there when nobody else was. So it'll be a, much easier now for finances to come on. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. going to have to earn that, that respect that our first finances actually gave us because mm -hmm. that's the hard part, you know? Yeah, I so, know. Well, there's all, and there's also the, the DBJ sidecar fund, the oh, angel yes. fund. Yes. Well, they're my partners for life. So right? Like, so that's always in your back pocket. Right. They're totally stuck with me. And, and, you know, they've been absolutely amazing. But again, we've earned their respect by delivering what we said we would do and keeping up with everything that they've asked us. So mm -hmm. a lot of people think we're lucky. I've heard people say, oh, you're very lucky. Turners, you're lucky. You get everything. No, we work really hard to be here and we work really we put in our time to make sure that um we benefit and mm -hmm. anybody has to do that you have to be able to be prepared to put in the time sacrifice and stay dedicated because it's not easy but it is doable it is doable great well thank you so much with that You're so welcome. um thanks so much for watching um debbie thanks so much debbie allison you have two names <laughs> I'm never sure which one, but Alison, um, very, very happy that you could join us this morning and um, best of luck. I'm so excited to hear about the new developments for the new machine. Thank you. I'm sure we'll be in touch about that. Definitely. Soft launch. And I'll be happy to obviously um, put this on my social media as well. Excellent. Okay. We'll let you know the details once it's ready. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you as well. Thank you for having us. This is a great conversation. Thank you.